Welcome back. If you've been following along, we've been building generative AI audio and music using a library from Facebook called AudioCraft. So far, what we set up was the ability for a front-end web interface to be able to pass along a set of descriptions for audio that a user wants to hear and generate audio based on that using a back-end built in Python and Flask and deliver those files back to the user so that they can download them. This was a pretty involved process. And as I mentioned at the end of the last video, there are tools that have been built to make this process easier. And one of them is called Gradio. If you have ever visited Hugging Face and you see this interface here, this is all using Gradio. And what Gradio allows you to do is write a whole lot less code to do things like take a text input and generate an output like this. So in this episode, we're gonna show you how to modify the code that we wrote in the last episode to just use Gradio. And that's gonna allow us to not have to build a front end at all or that API layer that's handled by Flask. We're gonna rip all that stuff out and just drop in Gradio. So let's get started. So the first thing is to remove the stuff that we no longer need. So this whole front end templates directory, we can just delete all the scripting, all the HTML, none of that is needed. And then we're not gonna need Flask anymore either. So we can delete Flask, argparse, and all of these routes that Flask uses. So essentially right now, what we have is just this generate audio function. Next, if we head over to Gradio, and access their docs. They've got a good quick start. And again, we're gonna be installing Gradio with just a simple pip install Gradio. So let's run that. And then they give you a demo of how this works. And in order to get what we're looking at below here, this is all the code that we needed to write. So we're importing Gradio, we're referring to it by this gr variable. And then we've got this function that's just gonna return hello name. And the way that we set that up is we say our demo is going to be implementing Gradio.interface. And interface is essentially the shorthand for your web front end. Everything is going to be contained within that interface. That interface is going to utilize a function called greet. And it's going to be passing in this text input and outputting to this text field here. And then we launch it. So if we try that out, my name is Mike. Submit it. Hello, Mike. That's sort of the hello world of Gradio. Now, how are we going to translate that into what we're building? Let's head back over to the code. First, we import Gradio the same way that they did, and we'll refer to it as gr. And then we're going to define a function for our UI. So I've just called it UI full. And then I'm saying with Gradio.blocks as the interface. And here's already a cool feature of Gradio. It allows us to write in Markdown rather than HTML. So where in HTML, we would have to write something like a href equals blank link name and a. This is doing the same thing in Markdown. And then we're just going to say interface.q.launch. So this queue is interesting as well because another thing that Gradio abstracts is the ability to queue up users to use the service one at a time. And that is an incredibly uh, difficult thing to program by yourself. So they've taken care of that for you. And then assuming that the queue is clear, they allow you to launch. And then we're just calling that function here by default once the document is ready. So UI full kicks off our interface. Now, where did I get this code? If you remember where we started in the very first video, there's this default app in the AudioCraft library, and I just abstracted it from what they were doing here. So if we look at the library, this was from AudioCraft demos music gen app.py. Now, what are these Gradio blocks? Well, where an interface just kind of automatically spits out your layout and decides where to lay things out. Blocks takes on more of a traditional web layout role 
where we're allowed to specify rows and columns and just gives us a little more control over the output of our interface. So you can read up on blocks here. These are some of the components, row, column, tab, group, accordion, et cetera. And as you can see in the documentation, we've got all these different components that we can implement into our interfaces. We've got audio, we've got plots, chatbots, color pickers, lots of things that would take quite a lot of work to program in HTML. So back in our code, since we're no longer using Flask, we're going to run this Python app just the way we were in the earlier videos where we just say Python and then the name of the file. And once this starts up, we're going to get a URL from Gradio for our web page. It's going to be a little bit different than the URLs we've been getting via Flask. And there's our URL for command click on it. We've got our very simple front end here. Haven't added much. You can see it injected some of this information about Gradio but we've got our heading tag here and our link. And if we looked at these, these have just been translated into plain old HTML. Got a par paragraph tag with a link inside of it and our H1 tag. Okay, so in our HTML version, we had a row for an input field, a row for the output and a submit button row. So let's go ahead and implement that here as well. So we just say with gradient row. Our descriptions that our generate audio function is going to need can be implemented here as a text box. Uh, we'll allow it to be two lines. We'll give it a label. We need our submit button. Call it generate button and give it a label of generate. And then another row for our output. And the output I'm going to choose is audio. They've actually used video because it allows you to display this waveform. I'm just going to use the audio component and give it a label of generated music. So right now we have this button, but we are not specifying yet what to do with that button, what happens when we click it. So the same way as in JavaScript, we might say add event listener. We're just going to use Gradio's click function. And the function we're going to call when it's clicked is generate audio. The inputs we're going to pass are these descriptions, in this case, just one description. And the outputs is whatever is going to be returned from that generate audio function. So we need to make some modifications to this function. First thing is we're just going to include that dot wave in the file name. That way, when we output it on the front end, we'll know that the file name is the same and hasn't been appended through this audio write function. So in the audio write function, we're going to pass this parameter add suffix equals false. Okay, there's one more thing I'm recognizing we're missing, which is if you look down at our inputs, we're passing descriptions, but there's just one. Uh, it's designed to work with an array of inputs. Because we just have this one description, when we call generate descriptions, it's going to break each letter of that text field into an array item. So we want to just pass it as an array item with one description. So I just added those uh, array brackets there. Oops, no, one last thing, just the First array item is what we're returning because we only have one description. And that should be good. And let's restart our server and try this out. Get some wolves howling again. And the other nice thing you'll notice is that out of the box, we've got this loader and a running timer of how long these things are taking. So you can see how slow my computer is. Okay, it is done. And there's our wolves. And you can see we've even got this download button. We can download the audio. Much easier than when we wrote our own code to handle all this stuff. So I think that's going to wrap our tutorial series on AudioCraft. Where to take it from here? Well, you may want to style some of these blocks, in which case Gradio gives you some documentation on how to style these things. Or you may want to think about, you know, what sort of app you want to build. Maybe you want to be able to have people tell a story in this text box and it extracts the sounds that might be present and adds them to a playable video. Maybe you want to generate some imagery with another AI model. Lots of options here. Hopefully this gives you a good start on how to build with tools like AudioCraft and keep an eye on other tutorial videos on AI. We'll see you soon.
Thank <laughs> you.